Hello. Now today I'm going to talk about a sea level rise visualization public art project that a group of us tried to do several years ago in Santa Barbara. The art project was called The Light Blue Line, and it was an attempt to paint the future impacts of climate change on the streets of the city. I want to introduce some issues of uncovering a specific type of local geographical knowledge. These issues range from the choice of seven meters to the outrage and blowback from local real estate professionals and climate change deniers over any public discussion about localized climate change vulnerability. The goal of Light Blue Line was to take a moment from the global future and concretize this as a feature in the local present. We were asking the city to imagine a future where the sea had risen seven meters. We hoped that this imagination would start conversations and spark learning moments about anthropogenic climate change. Let's work together to keep the waterfront down at the beach, we shouted out to the city. And what we heard back as an echo was unexpected. Screw that, we're here to make money. Despite its public ecological narcissism, Santa Barbara turned out to be just another Fresno by the sea. The first question everyone asked about Light Blue Line is this, why seven meters? Seven meters was chosen for a simple reason. It represents the amount of sea level rise currently captured in the Greenland ice sheet. Starting with a knowable fact gave us a discreet story to tell about a very non-discreet process. Now, seven meters of sea level rise is just one future moment. It is a moment that will predictably occur sometime after the planet's climate system hits a certain tipping point. And this particular tipping point results in the complete and irreversible melting of the ice sheet on Greenland. Other ice sheets have similar tipping points, and once they are reached, the ice sheet will melt completely. Much of what we cherish about Santa Barbara today would be destroyed and forgotten long before the seas arrive at seven meters. The beaches and the airport would have been the first to go. The downtown below Ortega Street would be completely submerged. The only road in and out of Santa Barbara would be Highway 154. There's a saying that I think is particularly true here on the West Coast. A hundred miles is a long distance in Europe, and a hundred years is a long time in the U.S. We found it remarkably difficult to get people to care much about the longer-term future impacts of global climate change. It's like asking people to watch a zombie movie where the threatening zombie horde can only shuffle along at one inch an hour. There is, after all, no shortage of more immediate bad news, and the mental buffer we use to calibrate and respond to danger and risk is kept absolutely full by a daily diet of fear from television and the internet. That was exactly why the Light Blue Line decided to put paint on the street. We wanted to reach the people who never went to Earth Day. For the majority of Santa Barbarians, Earth Day has the same impact as, well, a Renaissance fair or a homeopathy convention. We figured that painting a contour across the entire city would force almost everyone to drive across this line in their Escalades several times a month for the next five years. And their kids, at least, might notice this line on the street and ask their parents what it represents, and then school them about what it really means. In many ways, Santa Barbara is not simply Fresno by the sea. We had excellent support from the city council and access to climate scientists and GIS experts. We'd hope for Santa Barbara to be the vanguard of a global climate change public art movement. We envisioned light blue lines across coastal cities around the planet. Now some of these lines have happened, and more are probably going to happen. But at the time, we faced the brunt of a reaction that had more resources and a lot more room to hedge the truth than we did. Our story, The Light Blue Line, was anchored in the best science we could find at the time 
and our project was never designed to cost more than the price of the paint and the website. The day after the city council vote, we discovered that the Santa Barbara News Press would pick our project to show how anti-business and eco-crazy the city council was. Their editorial position was clear. Climate change is a fraud. The only thing the light blue line would do is scare people and lower property values. And the city council should focus on disappearing the homeless on State Street instead of drawing silly lines on the public pavement and private property. Now, the news press has no science or education writers in-house. They had failed to even have a reporter at the Light Blue Line decision council meeting. They also failed to attend any of the public art committee meetings or votes. But for the next several weeks, they created daily stories and devoted their editorial pages to one topic, stopping the Light Blue Line. We were still three months away from the November City Council election when all of the challenger candidates, who would normally be bashing one another, signed on as a block to oppose the light blue line as a prime example of civic foolishness and government waste. Looking back, some of the narrative threads from their editorial pages are illuminating. Someone asked, well, what was next? Lines for floods or earthquakes? Lines for wildfire threats? How much information should a home buyer be allowed to know? Just how many lines could a community handle, given that it treats its real estate like an ATM? The end game for Light Blue Line occurred when a deep pocket real estate tycoon named Jerry Beaver ponied up the funds for a protracted legal challenge. It was clear that the line would not be painted soon and that delay would only strengthen climate denier candidates for city council. We were asked to withdraw the proposal. After some internal deliberation, we agreed. A while later, I ran into Dave Davis, who runs the Community Environmental Council. Dave, I said, we failed. Failed, he said. Hell, you just got more publicity for climate change than anyone could have imagined. Everybody was talking about your line for most of the summer. Well, that's the story of the light blue line. And maybe it's not over yet. There are rumors that liners are lurking and plotting and New liners are getting itchy to paint something. Wendy and the beaver better be on their guard because there are any number of ways to mark a city's climate change vulnerability. People in this very room today might step up and do just that. So what do you say? Is it too late to work together to help keep the waterfront down at the beach? Anybody here got a paintbrush? Thank you.